dear friends yesterday we saw uh, unit 1 education studies uh, part 3 in part 3 there was a problem so i was just giving up to the various theories but when i started a family society uh, and school there was a power cut so i abruptly stopped nevertheless i go i i will continue with that maybe a new theory some new theories social movement theories we will be discussing on those things briefly i am not going to give very detailed notes at the moment there is no time left for that reason i am going to give a very brief at the same time most essential ideas on each unit so you will be able to cover before the 6 i am sure at least by 6th moon we will be able to cover all the 10 units in education subject i assure you of that because i all i started preparing in a uh, in a precise manner what is most important idea i would like to give maybe i will be giving separately in english as well as in tamil tamil separately so that would uh, help you and also for the sake of uh, saving that time let me tell you such kind of uh, uh, boos god bless you abundantly let us uh, start the uh, video uh, lecture immediately dear friends education studies part 3 concept of social movements theories of social movements in theories of social movements there are some important theories like uh, relative deprivation theory resource mobilization theory political process theory and new social movement theory so we will discuss the meaning of each theory and its educational implications and also some of the most important questions i am not going to give a long list of questions here the most important which we should understand only those questions i am going to give just now so that uh, you will be able to understand the concepts very clearly maybe when time permits we will do it in an elaborate manner okay what are the what is the concept of social movement what are the important points and insights how do you define social movement social movements are organized efforts by a large group of people to achieve or block a particular social political or cultural change i hope you understand again i repeat social movements are organized efforts by a large group of people to achieve or block a particular social political or cultural change so it implies a collective actions as a group they indulge in the social movement so they involve collective action and they are typically more organized than spontaneous crowd activities sadharana thani nabar kulukkalude seyalpadugalai vida idu vandu kootu serndha oru seyalpadaga irukirathu they involve collective actions and are typically more organized than spontaneous crowd activities than sustained campaigns needitha praharanangal uh, social movements engage in sustained and ongoing campaigns to bring about or resist change so needitha praharanangal edai petri ongoing campaigns to bring about or resist change maatrathai kondu vara alladhu maatrathai thavirka adai thadai seiya நீடித்த பிரகடனத்தை இது கொண்டிருக்கிறது தன் வெரைட்டி ஆஃப் ஃபார்ம்ஸ் தீஸ் மூமெண்ட்ஸ் கேன் ரேஞ்ச் ஃப்ரம் லோக்கல் கிராஸ் ரூட்ஸ் எஃபர்ட்ஸ் டு குளோபல் மூமெண்ட்ஸ் இன்வால்விங் ப்ரொட்டஸ்ட் அட்வொகேசி லாபியிங் அண்ட் அதர் ஆக்டிவிட்டீஸ் தட் இஸ் வெரைட்டி ஆஃப் இட் டேக்ஸ் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஃபார்ம்ஸ் பல வடிவங்களை இது எடுக்கிறது தீஸ் மூமெண்ட்ஸ் கேன் ரேஞ்ச் ஃப்ரம் லோக்கல் கிராஸ் ரூட்ஸ் எஃபர்ட்ஸ் தட் இஸ் அடிமட்ட முயற்சிகளில் அதாவது ஒரு கிராமப்புற கிராமத்தில் நடக்கின்ற அந்த முயற்சி என்று வைத்துக் கொள்ளலாம் கிராஸ் ரூட் எஃபர்ட்ஸ் டு குளோபல் மூவ்மெண்ட்ஸ் உலகளாவிய அந்த அமைப்புகள் வரை இது பல உருவங்களை பல வடிவங்களை தாங்கியிருக்கிறது இந்த சோசியல் மூவ்மெண்ட் இட் இன்வால்ஸ் ப்ரொட்டஸ்ட் அட்வொகேசி லாபியிங் அண்ட் அதர் ஆக்டிவிட்டீஸ் புரட்சிகரமான செயல்பாடுகள் போராட்டங்கள் அதை முன்னிறுத்துதல் இது போன்ற பல்வேறு செயல்பாடுகளிலே இந்த சோசியல் மூவ்மெண்ட் என்ற சமூக இயக்கம் ஈடுபடுகிறது தென் சோசியல் சேஞ்ச் தே ஆர் இன்ஸ்ட்ருமெண்டல் இன் டிரைவிங் சோசியல் சேஞ்ச் இன்ஃப்ளூயன்சிங் பாலிசிஸ் கல்ச்சரல் நார்ம்ஸ் அண்ட் சொசைட்டல் வேல்யூஸ் ஸோ 
they they are instrumental they, they they are the cause for the social change these social movements uh, make the society change in other words social change what are the educational implications of social movements critical thinking it creates what you call cre- uh, critical thinking vimarsana sindhanai it encourages students to critically analyze social issues or the role of collective action in addressing these issues then civic engagement uh it promotes the importance of civic engagement and active participation in societal change samugathodu samugathulude samugathodu eedupettu ulaipada idu munnirthukirathu civic engagement active participation in societal change then historical perspective provides a historical context for understanding past and current social movements and their impact on society so varlaatru kannotathai kondirukirathu the social movement it provides a historical context for understanding past and current social movements and their impact on society ipol irukkudi endra samuga iyakangalukku adithalamaga irupadu kadatha kaala andha soolan avave indha varlaatru kannodathai kondirukkirathu endra oru social movement at the interdisciplinary learning it involves a various disciplines such as sociology political science history and economics fostering a comprehensive understanding so interdisciplinary approach palveru paarangalai uchchalithu padithu alladhu kalandhu padithu interdisciplinary learning then it also promotes empathy and inclusivity oru vidamana pachatham pirarai nokkiya oru paarvai ellarum yetrukollugindra andha oru paarvai empathy and inclusivity Uh, social movement teaches the importance of empathy inclusivity and understanding diverse perspectives in social change efforts now let us talk about various theories of social movements as in the syllabus relative deprivation theory what are the important points and insights with regard to relative uh, deprivation theory what is the core idea here this theory suggests that social movements arise when people perceive a discrepancy between their expectations and their actual conditions at the very word unmayana nilaikum edirvarpukulla the idaiveliyai patri pesuvathu in the relative deprivation theory deprivation endu sonna irukkirathu ivargalukku illai illada oru nilai irukka vendiyathu illai deprivation endra adhe sollana relative deprivation theory so sense of injustice it is not the absolute level of deprivation but the relative sense of injustice that fuels movements uh, not the absolute level of uh, deprivation muluvadumaga ilanda oru nilai alla anal anidhi yekapatta andha soolalile indha yekangal uyir perigindrana so sense of injustice idu vaithirukirathu adha anidhiyudaiya andha unarvai idu kondirupadhu social movement then psychological factors Foc- it focuses on psychological factors and perceived inequalities as driving forces behind social movements so it focuses on psychological factors ulaiyal saarnda and kaaranigalai kondirukirathu perceived inequalities unarappatta and samuthuvam inmai soolalgalai idu unargirathu psychological factors what are the educational implications of uh, this relative uh, deprivation theory Uh, what are the educational implications understanding inequality it helps students understand the psychological impacts of social and economic inequalities i hope you understand so it makes students understand the inequality in the society then empathy development so other centeredness it cares for others in other words you know so it fosters empathy by highlighting how perceived injustice can motivate individuals to seek change they see certain injustices they don't want that so they are interested in the other people who are suffering in the world uh, for that uh, the social movements uh, do something in order to lift their lives up in other words so it fosters empathy by highlighting how perceived injustice can motivate individuals to seek change then social awareness it raises awareness about the importance of addressing <coughs> perceived injustices Uh, to maintain social harmony so 
subset of awareness is created with regard to the differences in the society especially injustice in the society and then and then it works for social harmony so that type of social awareness any social movement gives now it is over now we go for the next one uh, that is resource mobilization theory resource mobilization theory uh, next theory is yes? uh, it is about resources money uh, people skills networks everything resources what are the important points and insights with regard to the resource mobilization theory uh, resource uh, focus it is having resource as the focus it emphasizes the importance of resources money people skills and networks in the success of social movement in relate in relation to social movement how to uh, you know mobilize uh, uh, resources how to mobilize money how to get money for such for running such movements how to make people work for that what are the different skills needed for the social movement these are all resource focus i hope you understand so uh, this resource mobilization theory is concerned about the people skills and networks and especially money for the success of social movement then organizational strategy <coughs> it highlights the role of organization and strategy in mobilizing and managing these resources so uh, it has many strategies uh, methods in order to make the movement very successful so it talks about the role of organization and strategy in mobilizing and managing these resources uh, then another implication is that educational implication <coughs> this is uh, another important point with regard to uh, relative uh, mobilization theory that is professional activities it suggests that social movements are often driven by professional activist and formal organizations i hope you understand so so it's a highly skilled uh, work actually many intellectuals may be there so that way social movements are often driven by professional activities and formal organization organizations which have rules and regulations <coughs> it is at the high level maybe equal to government perhaps sometimes what are the educational implications <coughs> organizational skills it teaches students the importance of organizational skills and strategic planning in social activism in the samuga selpatile nirvaga sambandhapatta and the tirangal matrum and the nutpangalai patri manavargalukku idu eduthurukkirad organization skills <coughs> it uh, uh, talks about it is helpful for the students then resource management it highlights the need for effective resource management in achieving social change i hope you understand this then collaboration kutte serndu pani seidha it encourages collaboration network building as the essential components of successful social movements of course we have finished with this one this is a relative mobilization theory the most important points we have covered now this is a political process theory political process theory what is political process theory political opportunities it focuses on the political opportunities and the constraints that influence the emergence and success of social movements i hope you understood no uh, you know it seeks always political opportunities and also the various obstacles that influence the success of social movements so that is this the political process theory uh, is concerned about it it is concerned about the political opportunities with regard to the constraints that influence the success of social movements then state and policy another thing it emphasizes the role of the state political structures and policy environments in shaping movements <coughs> that is that is what this uh, political process theory talks about that is it emphasizes the role of the state political structures and policy environments in shaping the movements uh, next point will be strategic interaction or nutpamana or pagiru nutpamana or ஊடாடுதல் இன்டராக்ஷன் இட் லுக்ஸ் அட் ஹவு மூமெண்ட்ஸ் ஸ்ட்ராட்டஜிக்கலி இன்டராக்ட் வித் பொலிட்டிக்கல் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டிஸ் டு அட்வான்ஸ் தர் கோல்ஸ் ஸோ இட் ஆல்வேஸ் 
seeks political opportunities in order to make the movement successful. That is called a strategic interaction of social movement. So this comes under where political process theory <coughs> with regard to social movements. What are the educational implications? Political literacy. It enhances political literacy by explaining the role of political opportunities in social movements. Then policy understanding. It promotes an understanding of how policy environments can facilitate or hinder social change. So the summing will and the Kulfay Chulal Hill, Yavar in the Samuga Matrate, Adri Kandana, Valapati Tana and the Tali Say and the policy understanding air pathir. Then strategic thinking. It encourages strategic thinking about how to navigate political systems to achieve movement goals. This is what this uh, political process theory talks about. Uh, that is how it can uh, take advantage of uh, legal policies, the state level policies, etc. Always seeks the opportunities. So that is the idea here. So it encourages strategic thinking about how to uh, understand the political system or how to use the political system to achieve movement goals, social movement goals. <coughs> the fourth one. New social movement theory, uh, theory. New social movement theory. Pudiya samuga yekka kolle. What is that? Pudiya samuga yekka kolle. What are the important points and insights? Post-industrial focus. What does this mean? This uh, theory, that is a new social movement theory, focuses on movements that arise in post-industrial societies. Addressing the problems beyond the economic concerns such as identity, culture and quality of life. <coughs> Today we talk about the environmental uh, protection. So that, that comes under the post-industrial focus. Those days we used to worry about the, our economical status, our identity, culture, quality of life. And more than that, what is needed in the modern world that is environmental protection. That is called post-industrial focus. I hope you understand this. This is called a new social movement theory. So it is, it becomes more than the ordinary concerns like economic concerns, <coughs> identity, culture, quality of life. It's more than that. If environment is protected, all these things will be there actually. So that way this is called a post-industrial focus. The non-material goals. It emphasizes non-material goals like uh, environmental protection, human rights and cultural <coughs> recognition. <coughs> Formerly we used to be worried about our own quality of life, our own prosperity, well-being, all these things. And today we talk in a different manner. We speak in a different manner like uh, environmental protection, human rights and cultural recognition is much more important than the material goals. That is our prosperity, our wealth, our fame, uh, you know, our own growth in the world, all these things. More than that, today we are talking about environmental protection, human rights, cultural recognition. This is what this uh, new social movement theory talks about. I hope you understand this. Those days we used to be worried about only our prosperity and well-being. Today it is something else. Then collective identity. It is concerned with the collective identity. It highlights the importance of collective identity and shared values in motivating and sustaining movements. So collective identity, Kutaha Chernde Adayarati Peradal in Rubu Kemano Kartaha Rikaradal, the new uh, social movement theory. It highlights the importance of collective identity and shared values in motivating and sustaining movements. Sabuga Yakangal Yapuru Manidan Day Sulalai. What are the educational implications? Cultural sensitivity. This uh, new uh, social movement theory promotes a cultural sensitivity and awareness of diverse social problems beyond economic concerns. The same idea, no? Uh, normally we used to be worried about prosperity, our own well-being. Now, uh, diverse social issues, the entire world needs to be worried about. The environment is such a big issue today. Say, uh, once culture will be safeguarded only then 
only when the environment is protected. So the cultural sensitivity comes in here. <coughs> then identity and values. It encourages students to explore the role of identity and values in social activism. So, Suya Adayala, Madhipirala, Madhipugal. It encourages students to explore the role of identity and values in social activism. And the Samuga Sahil Patil Irkukudi, Madhipugal, Matram, and the Adayala Tinde Pangine, I will say with the car, I will say with the car, I will say with the car. New social movement theory, identity and values. Then holistic perspective. It provides a holistic perspective on social movements, encompassing a wide range of contemporary issues. Today we talked about uh, we talk about global issues, not our our own uh, you know selfish uh, prosperity, well-being, etc. The entire world has to be protected. That is the holistic perspective today. That is what this new social movement theory talks about. So, how to conclude, you know, these uh, these areas? Understanding the concept and theories of social movement is uh, very important in education, as it fosters critical thinking, civic engagement, and a comprehensive understanding of societal change. By integrating these theories into educational curricula, students can gain valuable insights into the dynamics of social movements and their implications for both historical and contemporary context. So history also becomes part of the social movement theory, no doubt about it. <coughs> Actually social movements are born because of history. In the history, a particular defect is found out, some disparity is found out, and so social movement uh, you know, is born in order to correct it or in order to uh, remove it, in order to change the society like that. Now, what is the concept? Uh, now, uh, we will have certain uh, questions with regard to the concept of social movements. What is the primary purpose of a social movement? It is to elect political leaders, to promote social change, to enhance corporate profits, to entertain the public. What is the primary purpose of a social movement? It is to promote social change. Very important one. What is the purpose of social movement, dear friends? It is to promote social change. That is the main focus of any social movement. <coughs> How will we explain this? Social movements are collective efforts by groups of people to create change in societal norms, values or policies. Their main goal is to address the problems in the world and create social, political or economic improvements globally in the world. Which of the following best defines a social movement? Uh, some uh, you know examples are given. Which best defines a social movement? We have to see. A yeah, temporary gathering of people for a specific event. Certainly not. It's a collective effort. It's a long-term collective effort to promote a racist change. This is what we have seen in the definition. Uh, third only a government initiative to improve public welfare is an ordinary thing. A business strategy to increase market share? No. So what is the definition of social movement? That is what we are talking about in this question. That is a long-term collective effort to promote or resist change. வளர்ப்பதற்கு அல்லது சமூக சமூகத்தில் சில மாற்ற மாற்றங்கள் தேவையில்லாத மாற்றங்களை தடுப்பதற்கு உருப்படியான மாற்றங்களை வளர்ப்பதற்கு தேவையில்லாத மாற்றங்களை தடுப்பது லாங் டேர்ம் கலெக்டிவ் எஃபர்ட் டு ப்ரொமோட் ஆர் ரெசிஸ்ட் சேஞ்ச் ஸோ அந்த சோஷியல் மூமெண்ட்ஸ் இன்வால்வ் சஸ்டைன்ட் நீடித்த ஆர்கனைஸ்ட் எஃபர்ட் ஒழுங்கமைக்கப்பட்ட முயற்சிகள் பை அ குரூப் ஆஃப் இண்டிவிஜுவல்ஸ் டு ஐதர் அட்வொகேட் ஃபார் or oppose changes in society often targeting social political or cultural problems <coughs> social uh, third question social movements typically rely on which of the following to succeed vetti adaivadhukku edhil edai adhigamaga nambugirathu na kel financial investment from corporations mass media coverage and public support secretive operations and anonymity government mandates and policies you know is a very important things propaganda advertisement social movement should be spread 
you know uh, unless it is uh, propagated it won't spread people have to propagate this to uh, very many people so uh, which will be they will be relying on what naturally they will be relying on mass media coverage and public support without the public support no social movement can become successful so both the things very important mass media for propaganda for advertising one's uh, the movement's uh, uh, ideas so mass media coverage and public support so social movements need public visibility and support to influence change மக்கள் பார்க்கணும் சோசியல் சமூக இயக்கங்கள் இருக்கின்றன என்பதை பார்த்து அவர்கள் அதை ஆதரிக்க வேண்டும் அது ரொம்ப முக்கியம் ஸோ அந்த சோசியல் மூமெண்ட்ஸ் நீட் பப்ளிக் விசிபிலிட்டி அண்ட் சப்போர்ட் டு இன்ஃப்ளூன்ஸ் சேஞ்ச் மாஸ் மீடியா கவரேஜ் ஹெல்ப்ஸ் பிரிங் அட்டென்ஷன் டு தேர் காசஸ் அண்ட் பப்ளிக் சப்போர்ட் கேன் ப்ரெஷர் டிசிஷன் மேக்கர்ஸ் டு ரெஸ்பாண்ட் டு த டிமாண்ட்ஸ் எஸ் நெக்ஸ்ட் கொஸ்டின் an example of a social movement is what uh, with uh, some four things are given which is the right on you have to see what is an example of a social movement among these four a national election campaign the civil rights movement a corporate merger a music concert tour of course you, you will understand the civil rights movement it is a global thing actually it is not only uh, you know uh, meant for one particular country or any civil rights movement everywhere in the state in the nation uh, in the global world in the world itself so uh, that is the right answer and example of social movement is the civil rights movement the civil rights movement in the united states uh, in india or in any other country was a social movement aimed at ending se- uh, racial segregation and discrimination against african americans exemplifying the characteristic and goals of social movement this is a, we are talking about the american context here the civil rights movement in india was a social movement aimed at ending uh, caste disparities uh, religious fundamentalism and the undemocratic tendencies in uh, groups of people etc that is what the civil rights movement in india is concerned about then what are the theories of uh, social movements relative deprivation theory theories of uh, now we are talking about various social movement theories of course this is also uh, what you know uh, relative deprivation what is a relative deprivation theory relative deprivation theory is concerned about social movements arise when people have more resources than they need or experience a gap between their expectations and reality or content with their social status or manipulated by external forces when does it happen relative deprivation theory adavadi irukka vendiyadhu illamal irukku relative deprivation theory adavadi yelai soolal illamal irukka vendu aval irukka vendu அப்போ ஏழை வச்சிக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிறார்கள் அவர்களுக்கு இல்லாமல் இருக்கிற அதுதான் இந்த டிப்ரைவேஷன் தேரி சொல்லுது த ரிலேட்டிவ் டிப்ரைவேஷன் தேரி சஜஸ்ட் தட் சோஷியல் மூமெண்ட்ஸ் அரைஸ் வென் பீப்புள் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் அ கேப் பிட்வீன் தர் எக்ஸ்பெக்டேஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் ரியாலிட்டி எதிர்பார்க்கும் எதிர்பார்ப்புக்கும் நடைமுறை உண்மைக்கு இடையில் இருக்கின்ற அந்த இடைவெளியை அனுபவிக்கின்ற பொழுது தான் இந்த ரிலேட்டிவ் டிப்ரைவேஷன் தேரி ஏற்படுகிறது so uh, that is what it suggests relative deprivation theory suggests that when there is a gap between the expectations and the actual situation so the relative deprivation theory uh, holds that social movements develop when the individuals feel deprived relative to their expectations or to other groups leading to dissatisfaction and a desire for change for take for example caste groups today so many social movements against the caste groups <coughs> even tk movement you know in tamil nadu travida kalagam no uh, under periya evk uh, uh, not evk uh, periya <coughs> so uh, that is you know it is it happens because of dissatisfaction and a desire for change the tk movement uh, we call it travida kalagam movement <coughs> so i think you can understand that which of the following best illustrates a relative deprivation <coughs> a wealthy individual losing a small fraction of their wealth 
is it uh, called relative deprivation a person comparing their low income to their high expectation is it a relative deprivation a community satisfied with its current resource is it a relative deprivation what is this an individual being content with minimal living standards is it so no a person comparing their low income to their high expectations uh, every person wants to you know uh, earn a high amount you know high salary or uh, the, uh, to attain prosperity in order to lead a comfortable life when these expectations uh, become false or falsify in their life then uh, you know this uh, 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 this is what this relative deprivation theory is concerned about uh, the persons compares the low income to the high expectations this is what illustrates relative deprivation irka vendiyadhu illa then relative deprivation involves perceiving a discrepancy between one's actual conditions and what one believes they deserve which can lead to frustration and mobilize social action so uh, it leads to frustration and finally they end up in social movement of course as an individual they cannot fight out so in social through social movement they can fight out against this type of social evil and then they can also attain their expectation that is the idea here the relative uh, that this relative deprivation theory is uh, talks about is concerned about it can lead to frustration and mobilize social actions this is how social movement is born then resource mobilization theory according to uh, already we have gone through that i think uh, you know the success of social movements largely depends on is a question actually this is a question according to resource mobilization theory the success of social movements largely depends on the number of grievances in society the ability to acquire and use resources effectively the charisma of individual leaders the level of government support so what should be the correct answer with regard to this according to resource mobilization theory the success of social movements largely depends on the ability to acquire and use resources effectively they must get enough resources for running the social movement and also they must use the resources effectively in order to reach the success you know both the things so that is what it is concerned about uh, resource mobilization theory so the resource mobilization theory emphasizes that social movements are require sources such as money labor and the organizational infrastructure effective management and deployment of these resources are very important for their success i hope you understand the general meaning which of the following is not a key aspect of resource mobilization theory uh, about the question which is not the key aspect of resource mobilization among the four uh, something is not uh, going along with the correct answer you know that you have to find out which of the following is not a key aspect of resource mobilization theory access to financial resources effective communication networks social grievances and psychological factors leadership and organizational skills so what should be the correct answer with regard to this one not the key aspect of resource mobilization theory effective communication networks we need that then only they can uh, get support from people and get money also social grievances and psychological factors that they also uh, uh, are they playing no leadership and organizations they need and effective communication networks they need access to financial resources they need but what is what is not needed here social grievances and psychological factors this is very much personal or uh, particular groups it belongs to particular groups it is not to the uh, social movement groups as such so that way social grievances and psychological factors will not go together with the, uh, the resource mobilization theory it is not the key aspect of course it can be an accept uh, at the remote in a remote way uh, it can be uh, okay but uh, still when you say whether it is a key uh, aspect of resource mobilization theory it is not the key uh, uh, you know resource mobilization it is not the key aspect social grievances and psychological factors so the resource mobilization theory focuses more on the practical aspects of organizing and sustaining a movement such as a resource acquisition and management 
rather than the underlying grievances or psychological motivations i hope you understand next question on political process theory political process theory argues that social movements are most likely to emerge when political opportunities are present when society is completely stable or a nidita nilayana or nilai perindapadu there is no possibility of political change the economy is flourishing which should be the correct answer for this question political process theory argues that political movements are most likely to emerge i mean to be born when political opportunities are present so it goes along with the political opportunities that is what political process theory so you must uh, keep this in mind political opportunities uh, should be present you know it always seeks the political process theory talks about political opportunities to be present uh, in order to make the social movement successful so uh, very important political opportunities with regard to uh, political process theory so what is the explanation here political process theory suggests that social movements are likely to arise when there are favorable political conditions such as increased access to political power changes in government policy or broader societal shifts that create opportunities for change that we have to understand then which of the following factors is considered crucial in political process theory which of the following factors is considered very important in political process theory among the four the moral righteousness of the cause the availability of political opportunities the technological advancement of the society the economic prosperity of the movements leaders which would be the right one the b the availability of political opportunity because he already we have seen that the political process theory is linked with the political opportunities in order to make the social movement successful that we have to keep in mind once and for all what is the explanation for this political process theory highlights the importance of political opportunities which are the external conditions that can facilitate or hinder the development and success of social movements so both the things either it can hinder or it can develop the social movement so uh, political opportunities uh, that are external conditions which will facilitate or hinder the development and success of social movement of course you understood i think the the, uh, the last one new social movement theory புதிய சமூக இயக்க கொள்கைக்கு பற்றிய இரண்டு கேள்விகள் நியூ சோசியல் மூவ்மெண்ட் தியரி எஃபர்சைசஸ் தட் கன்டெம்பரரி சோசியல் மூவ்மெண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் ஆஃபன் ஃபோக்கஸ்ட் ஆன் எக்கனாமிக் ரீடிஸ்ட்ரிபியூஷன் கல்ச்சரல் அண்ட் ஐடென்டிட்டி இஷ்யூஸ் பொலிட்டிக்கல் பார்ட்டி அஜெண்டாஸ் மிலிட்டரி இன்டர்வென்ஷன்ஸ் அப்கோர்ஸ் வி ஆல்ரெடி சீன் இட் கோஸ் பியாண்ட் அவர் பர்சனல் பெனிஃபிட்ஸ் யூ நோ இட் டாக்ஸ் அபவுட் த குளோபல் வெல்ஃபேர் த குளோபல் பெனிஃபிட் new social movement theory that is why it doesn't talk about the cultural identity or prosperity of one's own nation or anything it's, it is a broader it goes to the global world even so the new social movement theory emphasizes the cultural and identity issues new social movement theory posits that modern movements can concentrate on cultural identity and lifestyle problems rather than purely economic or political objectives reflecting broader changes in societal values and priorities of course we understand the general meaning out of these words it is more than ordinary prosperity or welfare it goes beyond that uh, the any social movement for that matter it talks about the global issues for an example environmental or human rights issue all over the world you know when something happens in india immediately other countries talk about it other countries even control one's government so that type of uh, uh, affectivity is there with regard to uh, you know this uh, uh, new social movement theory so no country can be separate it, it can be an island it becomes a part of the global world actually so that is what it talks about an example of a new social movement is the labor union movement the environmental movement the struggle for colonial independence the campaign for political office so which should be the right one the an example of new social movement is that i already told you the environmental movement because it is much more than uh, uh, one's own country you know the welfare of one's own country the entire world has to be safeguarded 
you know then only each person can be living securely happily safely so the environmental movement is an example of a new social movement focusing on ecological issues sustainability and changes in consumption patterns which align with the emphasis on cultural and identity concerns in new social movement theory i hope you understood this thank you very much dear friends for your patience i am giving this exactly in uh, uh, tamil version so that you understand it better because among uh, you know all the units only certain areas seem to be difficult otherwise uh, you know so many things you have already gone through in your bet or your mod courses i'm sure uh, that is why i want to uh, you know give more explanations on these uh, uh, you know theories and all so that you are able to understand it once and for all so thank you very much for your uh, presence here uh, kindly subscribe so that uh, you know i am boosted up to create more and more videos for you and also it has got lot of value before others if you value this please uh, subscribe also thank you very much god bless you abundantly